Hi, John Rhodes here and thanks for tuning in. I do hope you've been enjoying the videos and thanks to those of you that have subscribed. It has been a little while since I last posted, but I'm going to hopefully have some good content in the pipeline for you in the future. In this video, we're looking at gutta percha retreatment in molar teeth. And I'm going to use a variety of different techniques to remove the gutta percha and explain each one as I go through. There's a few little hurdles to get through as well during the treatment and I'll show you how I got over these. I hope you enjoy it. So here you can see the preoptive radiograph of a maxillary right first molar. The tooth has a bonded metal ceramic crown with good marginal integrity. There's no sign of any caries or marginal gaps or leakage or anything like that. You can trace the gutta perca in the MB1 canal and there's a periapical radiolucency around this root that tracks down to a buccal sinus tract. Here you can see the gutta perca in the distal buccal root and now I'm highlighting the periodontal ligament around the apex of this root so the root filling is a little bit short. The filling in the palatal root appears to be reasonably okay however there may be a large periodontal radiolucency. Obviously this would be a lot clearer on a CBCT as would the inferior border of the antrum. Here you can see the view down the microscope of the occlusal surface of the crown with an amalgam restoration where the previous access cavity was. I've removed that with a long tapered diamond burr and now I'm removing material from the base of the pulp chamber using an ultrasonic StarTex 3 tip. A Gates Glidden burr is by far the simplest and most efficient way of removing GP from the coronal part of the root canal. I only really use sizes 1 and 2 because it's very easy to create a ledge with the larger sizes and also you remove an awful lot of dentine. Here I'm now using a ProTaper SX instrument just to refine that coronal preparation. Looking down the microscope, you can see gutta perca in the mid third of the root canal. And I'm going to remove this using a reciprocating instrument, in this case, a Reciproc size 25. You could also use something like an Edge 1 R file. I'm not going anywhere near the full working length. Irrigation, as always, with a 3% sodium hypochlorite solution, using a side vented needle to prevent extrusion. I'm using a C pilot file to work out the working lengths with an electronic apex locator. These files are much stiffer and finer taper than a normal flexor file and penetrate through the GP better. I've now located the orifice of the MB2 along an isthmus between the MB1 and the palatal canal, and I'm just opening this up. Final preparation in this case was carried out using a Wave 1 Gold reciprocating instrument, the small one here being used to prepare the MB1 and MB2 canals.
I'm using 3% sodium hypochlorite as the irrigating solution, and I'm activating it with an endo activator. In this case, it's the new design of endo activator by Denton Supply Serona, which has a rectangular cross section to the nylon tip and appears to create much better agitation of the irrigant. I'm going to place a post in the palatal canal and here I'm just checking the size of the canal space. I don't want to remove unnecessary dentine just to fit the post. During irrigation you can clearly see confluence between the MB1 and MB2. The canals are all dried with matched sterile paper points before obturation, in this case with a vertically compacted gutter perker technique. Here you can see nicely how the MB1 and MB2 canals converge. A quick check down the microscope after obturating before placing a fibre post in the palatal canal and filling the access cavity with a dual cure composite. Here is the preoperative radiograph again showing the original root canal filling with the gutter perker slightly short in the buccal roots. And here is my postoperative radiograph showing good coronal apical seal and patency achieved in all the root canals. A distal angle view shows the convergence between the MB1 and MB2. So on to case two now. Here's the preoperative radiograph from the referring dentist showing the leaking coronal restoration. However, the dentist had prepped the tooth for a crown prior to me receiving the patient. The root filling in the MB root is short with patent root canal beyond it and a nice periapical radiolucency. The distobuckle and palatal root canals appear to be filled to length. However, there is a periapical radiolucency around the apex of the distobuckal root. And here we can trace the inferior border of the antrum. So here's the microscope view of the tooth isolated with rubber dam. It had been prepped for a temporary crown. I removed some of that restorative material with a long tapered diamond burr. And now we've got composite in the base, which I can remove using an ultrasonic StarTex 3 instrument. I'm now going to remove some of the filling material and any caries using a tungsten carbide LN burr.
So to rapidly remove gutta perca from the coronal part of the root canal, I'm going to use a Gates Glidden number one. These are very flexible instruments and have to be used quite gently, but because they're small, there's less risk of creating a ledge in the root canal. Can now use a rotary instrument, the Pro Taper SX, to refine the coronal preparation. Irrigation, as always, with 3% sodium hypochlorite. I've located the orifice of the MB2 and I'm just starting to flare it as part of the preparation sequence. Here I'm using a reciprocating instrument, a Reciproc size 25, to remove remaining gutta perca from the middle of the root canal. This instrument isn't going to the full working length because don't forget I haven't actually done an apex locator reading yet. Here I'm using an electronic apex locator to confirm all my working lengths to a reproducible reference point. Preparation was completed using a combination of Wave 1 Gold and Edge Endo 1 files. The micro opener is very useful for removing little tags of GP that are stuck to the walls of the canal. Irrigation in this case was carried out with 3% sodium hypochlorite, agitated with an IRISAFE ultrasonic tip.
After ultrasonic agitation, I then used the endo activator with the same 3% sodium hypochlorite solution. After irrigation, I carried out my comb fit. The canals were all dried using matched sterile paper points. wanted to take a comb fit radiograph so to avoid the combs being displaced I seared them off at the level of the pulp floor. The palatal root of this tooth was very long and it doesn't really show up clearly on my comb fit radiograph and the cone also appears to be long. So I'm intending to take another radiograph of the comb fit so that I can just double check. Removing the cone is very simple. In this case, you just insert a headstrom file into it and it will very easily be retrieved. I'm now continuing with vertical compaction in the buccal canals before refitting a cone in the palatal canal and then exposing a second cone fit radiograph. This is my second comb fit radiograph and you can see that the buccal canals have all been obturated completely and the cone in the palatal canal appears to be at the correct length now. There's a little bit of sealer beyond it from the previous comb fit. I can now complete obturation of the palatal canal. The referring practitioner wanted to place a post in here and so I'm leaving post space so that he can restore the tooth the following day. A final check with the microscope shows the pulp floor and the post space in the palatal canal ready for the referring practitioner to restore the tooth. I'm using PTFE tape to seal the base of the pulp floor and that post hole and then the restoration in this case as a temporary was a Compama Fuji 9.
So here we have the preoperative radiograph from the referring practitioner showing the short root filling in the MB root. And then here is my final radiograph showing the MB1 and MB2 superimposed in the mesiobuccal root. The palatal root canal with a small bead of sealer at the apex and then the distobuccal root nicely compacted from the pulp floor to the apex. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video. Please stay tuned because I promise there's going to be plenty more excellent content in the pipeline. I will try and get around to producing all the videos of the requests that we've had on the chat. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, but above all, enjoy your endo.